Today what I want to show you is a beautiful bruschetta featuring these gorgeous ripe tomatoes straight out of the garden that I picked this morning. To do this, what we have to do is toast some bread. Bruschetta, the correct way to say it is bruschetta. If you're saying bruschetta, you're not saying it properly. Bruschetta comes from the word bruscare, which means to burn, to toast. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be toasting some bread. This method of bruschetta that we're going to be making goes back to a trip that I took many years ago to Spain where they didn't chop the tomatoes. What they did was they used a box grater and grated the tomatoes and I'm going to show you a really awesome easy method. Let's get started. The first thing we have to do is cut this bread. I have a, just a beautiful uh, Italian bowl you can use. Uh, sourdough bread. You can use any type of bread that you like. The thing that's important is get a loaf that's whole. I'm going to cut actually the edges of this bread off and you're going to see why. Look at the beautiful structure in this bread. This is a beautiful nice loaf of bread. I'm going to cut the edges off just like this and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this in half right down the middle. As I do this, the idea is that I'm going to make these slices that are about maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. I'm going to turn this bread like this. These ends, you can toast them up, use them. You don't even need to cut them. I'm just going to show you a way that when we make this, you're going to toast more surface area of the bread and it's going to be more delicious in my opinion. Do it however you like. Don't throw this out though. You could always grate this, use this for breadcrumbs. There's so many uses for old stale bread. Make meatballs, whatever, it's all good. I'm gonna put this on the side, we don't need it right now. Now, I've got this bread cut, so I see the open surface, right? And then on the other side, we have another open surface, but surrounding, we have the crusty part of this bread. I'm gonna take this just like this, and again, the idea is that we're gonna make kinda of like an inch and a half, two inch cut. Right? And as I come down, I want this bread cut a little bit thicker because when we make the tomato topping, I want this to kind of absorb some of that moisture. I'm going to get a, a sheet pan and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to lay these out in front of me. If you think that this bread is cut too big, what you can do is always cut these pieces in half right? Make them a little bit smaller. All I'm doing is taking this bread and I'm going to lay them on just like this. If you haven't gone to our social media pages, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I've got all kinds of wonderful recipes. You can also ask any question that you'd like on my website at leospizzeri.com. On that website, you're going to see all kinds of other great content. You can also visit the YouTube channel with other beautiful videos and how to cook step by step just like I cook for my family. I'm almost done cutting this bread and you can see this doesn't take very long. Now while I'm doing this, I have my oven going. I raised my rack of my oven so that it's about four inches below the, um, the, the broiler uh, element inside. So the part where your broiler is, I've got it about four inches from there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil just like this. I'm going to give this just a little coating all the way across. And the reason I love this method is because that extra virgin olive oil absorbs into this bread. All right, I'm going to give these a flip and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All that I'm going to do from here, once I've got this olive oil on just like this, is take this bread and I'm going to go right into my broiler. This is going to go into the oven. I'm going to turn it in two minutes and by four minutes these should be perfectly toasted and I'm going to show you how I finish it. So my bread is toasted and it's toasted on both sides. The thing that I love is that you're going to get this really crispy exterior but the bread is going to stay nice and spongy and chewy in the middle which is another great thing. Again, we want it to absorb some of this juice. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some fresh garlic here. I'm going to cut this garlic down the middle 
I'm gonna take these pieces of bread individually and I'm gonna rub the garlic onto the bread. This is gonna give it this beautiful burst of garlic flavor without overpowering everything in here. So we're making like this garlic toast, if you will. And again, bruschetta was all about this method, right? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do all of these breads and then I'm gonna show you how we make the perfect sauce. Now, I've got this done. This is so simple. You could actually make this ahead of time, the day before, the night before you need it, even the morning of. And then all you do is have this bread ready to go and then now you just scoop and serve, which is how I'm gonna show you how to do this. I have a variety of tomatoes here. I've got these little round ones, um, you know, more of a beefsteak tomato. I've got some plum tomatoes, some San Marzano's, a lot of different kinds of tomato. Use whatever you can find that's the freshest and at the peak of the season. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these tomatoes and I'm gonna cut them all down the middle so that the insides are exposed. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna do that all the way around. The thing that I loved most when I learned how to make this was that when we grate these tomatoes, I'm gonna to use the large side of a box grater. I don't mind the seeds inside of this one. If you want no seeds in there, in my uh, spaghetti pomodoro video, uh, you can find my method for getting the seeds out of your tomato without them splashing all over you. Now to this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grate this tomato down just like this. And as I'm pushing down, the skin of the tomato is actually remaining intact. I'm gonna go until I feel this push against my hands, and the only thing that's gonna be left is literally the tomato skin. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna keep doing this, I'm gonna go all the way around, and then this tomato inside over here, um, again, we're, this is the base for what we're gonna do next. Bruschetta doesn't have to be tomato. Bruschetta can be anything. You can make it with mushrooms, you can make it with ricotta, really anything that you have sitting around and it's going to, uh, it's going to produce a beautiful result. Again, look at it. We got all of this out and all that's left is just the skin of the tomato. I'm going to keep grating these and uh, I'll catch you all in a few. The last thing I'm going to do, I only used a half a clove of garlic to rub on the outside of all these toasts. I'm going to take the other half of garlic, I'm going to chop it up really fine, and I'm going to stick it inside this salsa that I'm making. I'm going to make some really, really thin incisions across the length of this, and then I'm going to turn it sideways, and I'm going to just chop this very, very finely. I'm going to encourage you that when you do this, do your fresh garlic chopped just before you need it. Don't, don't, don't use one of those medieval torture devices to push the garlic through the little holes, right? A lot of people, a lot of professional chefs will, uh, will tell you that same thing. Use the garlic just the way it was intended, just like this. I got maybe a tablespoon of garlic here and I'm gonna stick this inside. If you don't like fresh garlic, guess what? Don't use it because you've got some of that essence of the garlic already on the bread. Now, the next thing that we're gonna need is some fresh basil. I'm gonna pick these leaves just like this and I'm gonna show you a trick that I love to use on all of my sauces. You'll see that when you watch any of my pizza videos, I like to take my, um, my basil and use it fresh in this manner. I'll take it all in my hand, just like this, and what I wanna do is I wanna squeeze it as hard as I can because the leaf of basil has all these tiny little cells inside, and by squeezing it like this, we're causing those um, cells to burst. And as soon as I open my hand, the perfume of fresh basil is here because all of those essential oils from the basil are coming out just like we had with our garlic. Now from here, I'm gonna take a, a page from my grandmother's book and I'm gonna hand tear this. If you prefer to uh, chop it up with a knife, go ahead. But I always notice that when you chop with a knife, especially basil, it has a tendency to turn black, which I don't like. 
The last thing that I have to do here, we have to put some salt in this. Because none of my vegetables, my basil, my garlic, the tomatoes, nothing was salted. So I'm gonna take some sea salt and I'm gonna give a couple nice pinches of sea salt. I'm gonna take a heavy drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. This is maybe about a quarter of a cup I put in there. I wanna put a little bit of black pepper. I love flat, fresh black pepper in here. And I'm gonna give a couple turns here of some fresh black pepper. And this is something that's so simple that you're gonna get oohs and ahs from your whole family when you do this. All I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna give this a nice turn. I'm looking to stir this to the point where the oil just starts to shimmer in the juice of that tomato. I got a nice serving platter here. This was actually my grandmother's pasta dish and I love to use this. I love the colors. It's all hand painted, made in Italy. I'm gonna take some of these toasts just like this. I'm gonna scatter them here on this plate. Again, we're not trying to make an art project, but we are trying to make something look beautiful and delicious. I'm gonna take a piece of bread just like this. Give it a stir. The reason why I'm stirring this is because I put raw salt in here because I want to make sure that that salt is evenly distributed. And from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spoon this tomato mixture right on top, just like this. Don't worry about the, the juice of the tomato that's rolling off the side. That's what we want. It's going to absorb into this bread and it's going to be super delicious. Again, I'm just going to do this all the way down the line until I have all of my bruschette topped. I'm going to take some beautiful Parmigiano Reggiano. This is the real stuff, the one with the Parmigiano stamp on the side of the rind. If you buy Parmigiano, you know you bought real Parmigiano because of what you paid for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a microplane, just like this. A microplane is a fancy grater with really sharp, really fine teeth on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it snow all over this beautiful bruschetta. I love the flavor of Parmigiano Reggiano with fresh tomatoes and with um, fresh basil. Now I've got this uh, bruschetta topped. I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna give just one more turn on each of these with a little black pepper. If you want this a little spicy, you can cut up a small little chili pepper, a fresh chili pepper and stick that inside. You can put a little crushed red pepper flake into that mix, make it a little spicy. A lot of different things that you can do with this. You don't have to follow my directions word for word. And then the last thing, the piece that's most, most important is a little bit of that liquid gold. Extra virgin olive oil from Italy, of course. I'm gonna give this a nice little drizzle of raw or olio a crudo. And there you have it, folks. My beautiful bruschetta is done. And some fresh basil. Maybe even I got a little bit of fresh oregano. I love fresh oregano. I can even give a little fresh oregano just like this across the top. Let's try it out. I'm gonna take this. Ooh, I can see how, how soft this is already. <laughs> Guys, I'm doing this for you. Somebody's gotta do it. I'm taking one for the team. Mm. 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 The bread is crispy around the edges. Those tomatoes are so beautiful and fresh and that little kick of garlic and basil coming together and then that parmigiano right on the end with that fresh olive oil that we put that little drizzle a little bit of saltiness that burst of fresh flavor folks if you're not making this you're not living one of these a nice glass of wine and i tell you what that makes a perfect afternoon in my book i want to thank you all for joining me today in my kitchen and i look forward to you cooking with me in the future if you have any questions, please visit my website, leospazeri.com. If you haven't subscribed to my social media, follow me on Instagram and Facebook by searching Ask Chef Leo. I want to thank you again, folks. Buon appetito. Ci vediamo. Ciao.